All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here, and uh, I want to do a video today on calf development, specifically 21 reasons why your calves aren't growing. The only problem is, I don't know that I can come up with 21. So let's see what number we can come up with. So I do love to talk about calves, and there's really not a whole lot of creative thought process out there when you, when you try to study calves. Everybody always says the same stuff. It's low twitch muscle fibers, keep your knees straight if you don't work your gastroc, stand up tall on your toes, do bent knee for your soleus. That's pretty much all the help you're gonna get on calves, but I have what I think is a very unique way of training calves, and I'm, I'm very excited to show, th show this to you. Now, let me start though. Reason number one, I think that people don't have calves is because they blame genetics. What I wanna do is I'm gonna put a picture up. I'm gonna show you when I was in my early 20s, Check out the picture. You can see everything is developing pretty well, but my calves. You can see in the picture, my calves are pathetic. Maybe they were 16 inches in that, in that picture, somewhere around there, but they were pathetic. And I was training them like every other body part. I was treating them like back or quads or chest. I was training them once or twice a week, 12, 16 sets. Now fast forward, the second picture, it's a close up. It's when my calves hit 20 inches. That was actually in, in uh, 2012 when I had turned 40 years old. I learned a lot of things along the way that I, I think are gonna help you. But number one is, the first thing I want you to do is get out of your mind that it's all genetics. Do genetics play a role? Absolutely. But you can overcome genetics to a point. You can't change the insertion of your calves or where they attach, if they attach high, like let's say a Kevin Durant where it just looks like one giant long Achilles tendon, but you can still grow your calves. So get this mess out of your head that it's all genetic. It's not, okay? That's number one. Okay, number two is simply the priority and the intensity you give your calves. I see so many people coming to the gym, they train their legs, they work really hard, then they get on a standing calf machine, they kind of do these jump reps, they do two sets of 20, and they leave, and then they complain, well, my calves won't grow. Well, let me ask you this. If you train your chest like that, if you train your back like that, your arms like that, would they grow? No, of course they wouldn't. The problem is, <laughs> is you're putting literally no thought process, no intensity, nothing in your calf workouts. So <laughs> the second reason is your calf workouts are just terrible. You can't treat them. Think about it, it's a tough muscle group. And yet you put the least amount of effort into it. That makes no sense at all. You gotta be very, very committed when it comes to building calves. That's number two. Right, so the next reason, and this is a big reason uh, why your calves aren't growing, is because people don't really emphasize the stretch. They're so worried about getting on their toes, they just focus on, well, you gotta get a full contraction at the top. Well, you're, you're, your calves are used to walking around. Uh, they, they, that motion is called plantar flexion, you know, when you kind of push down on your toes to stand up. They're very used to that. But what your calves aren't used to is coming out of a stretch. So every single rep you do, you should really focus on the stretch. So you gotta get a stretch. Now, another reason why well, your calves aren't growing is you're not pausing in the stretch. So <clears throat> it's real easy to bounce out of the bottom and basically shift all the tension to your Achilles uh, tendon, which is not what you want. What I like to do is when you get down to the bottom, get down there and hold it for about one second. So don't bounce. Bouncing out of the bottom is another just classic reason why people's calves aren't growing. So stretch, number one. Number two, sit in the bottom and actually hold that stretch. That's what your calves aren't used to. They're not used to coming out of kind of that dead stop position um, out of the stretch. All right, now let me ask you something. This is the tip that I think is probably the most valuable tip I'm gonna give you today. Do you think if you trained only your buys and not your tries or vice versa, your arms would get to their biggest? Of course not. What, if, about, what about on your upper legs? If you trained your quads but not your hamstrings, would your legs get to their biggest? Absolutely not. So I've, I've kind of figured this out when I was about 38, 39 years old, and this is one of the keys that allowed me to get those 20-inch calves. I started to think to myself, well, what about training your tibia? Your tibia is a muscle that runs in front of your calf right here. And that muscle dorsiflexes your foot. So that's when you're pulling your foot up, like so. So plantar flexing is pushing your foot down. Dorsiflexion is pulling your toe up. So I got to thinking about it. Well, why don't we train the front of our calves? Just like we train both sides of our upper arm, both sides of our leg, 
what about the lower leg? Why don't we train the tibia? So I started to work, incorporate tibia raises. And I started to superset tibia raises with my gastroc, the, uh, you know, kind of the double head, the big muscle in your inner calf. Um, anyways, let me show you what that looks like. There's a couple different ways we can do this. So, if you don't have any fancy equipment, you can just hang your toes off a bench and do this. I'm simply dorsiflexing. Okay, a lot of reps here, 20, 25 reps. Pump them up. Now, you may be lucky and have one of those hammer machines where you can sit down and actually put your toes under a pad and pull up. If you have one of those, use those. Those are phenomenal. But you may not have one of those. A lot of the gyms are taking those out these days. So there's another version I want to show you with a band. Okay, this is how you would use a band if you want extra tension. So I've got one of these Elite FTS mini bands. Hook it up under a bench. Put your toe up here. And now I can stretch my tibia. I can get a full contraction right here. It's contracting very hard right here. You can see the muscle right there as it outlines. So this is another great way to hit your tibia. But what I want you to do is I want you to start supersetting, training your tibia with your gastroc. Okay, again, I think that tip is huge. 20, 25 tibia raises, if you use a band, maybe 10 or 15, in between every set of regular standing raises or seated raises you do. Now, I tend to, I tend to gravitate more toward the standing raise. Um, which brings, me, which brings me to my next tip. Make sure your legs are straight. Make sure your knees are locked. I know people freak out about having your knees locked, but keep your knees locked so the weight will stay on your gastroc, okay? The, the double-headed, again, that double-headed calf is your gastroc. As soon as you start bending your knees, weight transfers to your soleus, which sits underneath that. So if you do nothing else, superset standing raises with tibia raises and your calves will blow up the whole, your whole lower leg. Okay, so I think this goes without saying, but I think a lot of people, the reason, one of the reasons why the calves aren't growing is they're just going too heavy. Um, don't get me wrong, I love to do heavy raises, particularly in the stretch. But when the weight's so heavy, you're just kind of jumping, as I mentioned before, you're, you're not going to get the growth that you need. So lighten up the weight if you need to, to keep your knees straight, as I mentioned earlier. Really work that stretch. So don't be so obsessed with going heavy until you master that form. And then work your way up and go heavier and heavier and heavier, which is actually what I want you to do. Calves are a very unique muscle too. I, I personally believe they can handle a ton of frequency. When I showed you that picture in my early 20s, I mentioned I was training my calves just like every other body part. Well, it's a muscle, right? Um, so I just trained them once or twice a week, 12, 16 sets, like they were a normal body part. But when I really started to train them more frequently, four or five times a week, I saw a massive growth, in particular when I mixed in the tibia raises. So if you can hit them more often, you know, I kind of, I'm kind of laughing when I think about this, but I didn't use, every single time I was in a gym, I trained them, unless my feet were sore. I actually used to use my soreness in my feet as a gauge, like, okay, my feet are sore, I probably should back off. But I do think it's reasonable to train them four or five times a week. It's a tough muscle. You're walking around them all, all the time. You just can't treat them like any other muscle. Another reason why your calves aren't growing is you, maybe you don't have any pain tolerance. Anybody who trains their calves hard can tell you the burn is excruciating. But that's usually when the set kind of starts. You gotta keep working through it and working through it and working through it. I can't really think of another body part, maybe quads, where you feel that intense of a burn. Those little, those calves may be little, but man, those things can create a lot of pain. But most people just don't have the wherewithal to work through the pain, the, the, to work through the pain. So the reality is, is you just got to take it up a notch when you're training your calves. Don't even count your reps until it, start, until it starts burning. Once it starts burning, then you can count if you want. Now, I will tell you this, I don't particularly even count my reps. I just go until I can't do any do anymore, but pain tolerance. Another reason why your calves aren't growing is you're just not going to failure. Um, again, your calves are a dense, tough muscle. You gotta take these bad boys to failure, uh, more so than other body parts. 
just about every single set I do on calves, I take to failure. When you're a beginner, it's gonna make you incredibly sore, so you probably don't wanna to go to failure when you're a beginner, but as you get to intermediate and advanced, you wanna to go to failure. Take all your sets once you're warmed up on calves to failure. All right, let's talk volume. I mentioned that I was treating my calves like any other body part. I was picking three, four exercises. I, I, look, I just mentioned you should take all your sets to failure. So what should, what should immediately enter your mind is, oh, that means my volume can't be too high. And if you thought that, you're absolutely right. So what I like to do on calves is, I mentioned high frequency, and I mentioned taking them to failure. So that should tell you right there, logically your volume is gonna to have to be really low. So what I normally will do is a couple sets to warm up, and then three or four sets to failure. Boom, that's it. If I'm using a standing raise, four sets max to failure with the tibia raises in between. If I'm doing a seated machine, same thing. Three or four sets to failure. So that's all I'm talking about, three or four sets. Let's say you do three sets. Let's say you train your calves five days a week. That's 15 sets for the week. So if you look at all the literature, they talk about somewhere between 10 and 20 sets. It's probably what you want anyway. So what we've done is we've essentially taken the volume that you would normally do and we've spread it out. On some body parts, I don't think it's quite as much of a big deal as they make it out to be, but on calves, I do. I do think three or four sets, boom, you're done. Next day you're in, three or four sets, boom, you're done. I do think a low volume approach works very well as long as your frequency's high and you're taking sets to failure. Now, not only are we gonna take three or four sets to failure, I want you to use some high intensity techniques. Another thing I don't see people doing, if you're not using high intensity techniques, I think you're, you're missing out on some calf gains as well. I particularly like partials out of the bottom. If you remember how much I emphasize the stretch, you can continue in the set by working the bottom half and stretching. And the other thing I like to do is, notice I haven't been beating it into your head to get up on your toes and flex. I do think it's important. I don't wanna come off that I don't think it's important. But what I'd rather see you do is just get up on your toes every once in a while and do an iso hold and just sit there and flex. So two techniques I really like are partials out of the bottom and an iso hold at the top. I think that's a pretty brutal way to extend the set. Another thing I've seen over the years that um, I think can hurt your calf gains is too much cardio. What initially happens when people start doing cardio is I think it's actually good for their calves. They get better blood flow. You see some improvements, but then as they keep making the cardio harder and harder and harder, uh, and this actually goes for upper legs too, you start to see the calves get smaller. It's uh, in my world, in the competitive bodybuilding world, it's very common to see people's legs shrink up pretty quick, their calves and everything, when they start really overdoing cardio. So if your goal was to get really, really big calves, I would go moderate on the cardio. I certainly wouldn't be doing 60 minutes a day or anything like that. Um, I think a little is good. I think a little encourages blood flow, it's movement, but endurance runners look the way they look for a reason. Sprinters look the way they look for a reason. So if you're training your body, uh, if you're doing all too crazy amounts of cardio, your body's going to adapt to that. So just be careful with the cardio, don't overdo it. Another reason why your calves aren't growing is you're probably a little too obsessed with foot position. You know, toes, uh, turned out, heels in, inner calf, uh, and vice versa if you're outer calves, uh, toes in, heels out. It really doesn't make much of a difference. What I would say to do, instead of wasting your time worrying about your toe position, is if you want to put a little bit more pressure on the inner head of your calf, just widen your stance. Widen your stance will do the job just, just fine. The other thing when you're too worried about your toes in and toes out, a lot of time to use that position, your knees bend. It's real hard to keep your legs straight, which takes pressure off the meaty part of your calf, your gastroc. So you're already not working your, you're already not working your uh, gastroc, the inner head. So straight feet straight ahead or wide, but stop with all the nonsense, toes in and toes out. So I talked about the importance of stretching while you're training. If you're doing this superset of tibia raises and calf raises, your calves are gonna be absolutely full of blood. And if you watch my stuff, you know that at the end, I like to really stretch the muscles even more. 
So make sure you're stretching. Uh, I'll show you a partner stretch now that'll really light up your calves, your gastrocs in particular. Then I'm gonna show you a way to stretch your tibia as well. This is for after the workout. Now, if you look at all the literature on the muscle fiber makeup of calves, you'll see that they are, there is more slow twitch muscle fibers that are more kind of endurance related as opposed to explosive fast twitch muscle fibers. There's more in your gastroc, there's certainly a lot more in your soleus. So that being said, even though I don't think you should do really high reps all the time, I do think it's wise to occasionally do some sky high reps. I'm talking about a set of 50, a set of 80. I'm talking about one set maybe every week to two weeks like that. So again, just based on the muscle fiber makeup of the gastroc and the soleus, I do think you should do some occasional sky high reps, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 reps for one set, maybe once every week, once every two weeks. I mentioned that sometimes if you look at the way endurance runners train versus the way sprinters or athletes train, um, athletes in explosive sports, you'll see that their calves are more developed than like sprinters, for example. I think we would all agree on that. I do think there is some validity to doing some occasional explosive work for calves. Um, when you look at, again, the best sprinters, some of these guys are explosive, they actually have pretty good calf development. Their calves are typically inserted really high, so they don't have these genetically crazy calves, but they're actually developed. They're actually developed really well, they're just really highly inserted calves, which you could argue may, may, may not allow you to run faster. So I do like some occasional explosive work. Jumping. Um, would be the obvious thing. I remember when I used to do banded assisted jumps. So I would put a band around my body and under my arms and I would hook it up to a squat or a power rack and I would jump and it would pull me up in the air and I would land. And I remember when I would do three or four sets of four reps, my calves would be crazy sore the next day. Probably something about load landing on them really hard, the eccentric load, the isometric contraction, but if you throw in some explosive, some jumps every now and then, I think it's a nice little change for your calves as well. Something certainly you can sprinkle in. So there's been two times that I've had really awesome um, periods of growth in my calves. The first time was in my 20s. I showed you that picture, how bad my calves were. So what I did was I upped the frequency, but I started doing my calves right when I got to the gym. So I would either do a standing raise or a seated raise. And usually what I did is I alternated. Monday standing, Tuesday seated, Wednesday standing, Thursday seated, Friday standing. But I did them first when I got to the gym when I was fresh. Another thing if calves are a problem is very simple. It's just prioritizing. Just do them first when you get to the gym. Very, very simple, okay? Prioritize your calves, do them first. All right, so this one may seem a little funny, but I got several stories here. Strictly anecdotal, and there's no scientific evidence of this at all. Um, have you ever noticed little kids when they walk around on their toes, how big their calves get? What about like ballerinas? Ballerinas have crazy calves. Gymnasts, awesome calves. One thing you can do to improve your mind-muscle connection with your calves is just when you're walking around your daily life, just stand up on your toes. Just walk around, as you're walking around, just stand up on your toes and flex your calves. If you do that over and over and over, it's going to help your mind-muscle connection, and it's just extra volume, it's just a little extra for you. It's nothing hard, it's not gonna make you sore, but that's just a little thing that um, could make a difference. So, there you go. All right, we made it to 20 tips. So for this to be 21 tips, you have to add a tip below that I, that I missed so what did I miss? Give us the 21st reason why your calves aren't growing below. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.